Ladies and gentlemen in the Shred Gaming Tentacon video, let's discuss Intel's Optane technology, shall we? Which is basically their SSDs powered by their 3D Crosspoint or X-Point, whatever you want to say, new memory technology. So you might remember Crosspoint memory as something we discussed just a few weeks back when some details finally emerged. There's not a massive amount of information exactly how the memory works just yet, but we'll go into what we know in just a second. Now, this is also an article as well where I've included a few slides. Um, some of them are copyrighted, so I've done it as an article rather than risk the YouTube copyright monster. Just unfortunately, that's how it is. But if you want to check them out, you can. There's not a massive amount in the slides, but if you want to take a look, you, you know, most certainly are welcome to. Anyway, moving back. So, Optane Technology is the official name of products using their 3D X-Point memory technology. Um, the technology is in very, very impressive. Intel have demonstrated that it's going to have about 7.2 um, times greater IOPS performance at low Q depths and up to 5.21 times IOPS on a conventional SSD. Now you might be saying, well, what are they even comparing this to? Like, is it like a piece of crap? Is it like an SSD from, I don't know, early 2012 or something like that? You know, it, is it from when... You know, the dinosaurs rode into Earth, what, what are they comparing this against? Well, it's actually compared against Intel's own P3700 SSD, which is actually one of the fastest SSDs on the market. It's one of the, the Intel leading SSDs, if you will, um, which is actually a PCIe one. Um, and as I said, Intel is extremely proud of it. It's using a traditional NAND technology, and it hits IOPS of around 10,600. 3D X-Point, meanwhile, or Cross-Point, I keep saying X-Point, really annoying. Anyway, doesn't really matter. That's hitting an IOPS performance of 76,600. So, once again, 10,600 versus 76,000. That sounds a little bit of a difference, right? Now, Intel are also pointing out, to anyone who listens, that... The SSD is going to be a thousand times faster than any other SSD on the market, which is a census shattering claim. I mean, let's face it, you say something's a thousand times faster, but it's not so much with the clear what they're referring to here because it's a bit ambiguous. It's it, it's a very ambig, you know, it's, I wish they would have clarified pretty much. I'm going to assume it's latency they're referring to. I'm going to make that assumption because it's obviously not IOPS performance and it's unlikely to be bandwidth. So it's looking like it's got to be latency. I'm going to make the assumption it's going to be latency. But the technology itself, which as I said, I would love to do a full analysis of this. But unfortunately, there's just not enough information. A lot of it is kind of supposition and theories based on other pieces of technology and random leaks and other bits and bobs that have popped up throughout the, the months. But there's no you know real super duper in-depth uh, bit of information at the moment. But effectively, each memory cell on the cross point stores a single bit of data. So what you have, uh, very simply, um, is uh, the actual memory consists of both a selector and a memory cell and these are sandwiched between a word line and a bit line so you simply apply voltage to the word and bit line and this will activate a single selector or a read operation so we're not 100% certain how this process works right now the theory is that if you want to read from it, you might apply a different amount of voltage from writing from it, but it's all a theory because it's, as far as I'm understanding it anyway, from Googling around, it's not been 100% confirmed by Intel. Or for that matter, I suppose, since they are working with Micron on this by Micron themselves. Now, Intel have managed to stack this up to 32 layers at the moment but they are planning to move to a 48 layer design. And by planning, I mean they're already on the way. It's already being developed. Now, the real interesting thing, I think, is that first of all, this design can be used on a multitude of different things. Obviously, servers are, are a bit of a, an obvious one. In fact, you can actually get this in a dim form. So you could basically put it into you know, a Xenon uh, server rack. 
but it's also of course going to naturally um, scale down to let's say a, a laptop or scale to your desktop or what have you one of the problems with SSDs is that it's actually really difficult to get like SSDs of a good density and one of the promises that Intel are making with this is that you theoretically at least once again if we believe their claims we should be seeing um, up to 10 times greater density which is rather impressive once again to reiterate Intel have pointed out that the prices are not going to be terrible they're not we're not going to be you know spending 10,000 pounds or something ridiculous for 256 gigabytes I'm obviously completely throwing out a stupid price but still it, it's looking fairly reasonable and that's a good thing finally just to reiterate this is not going to be replacing something along the lines of you know high bandwidth memory it's not a D, it's not a DRAM replacement technically it's not even an SSD replacement it's a technology which is going to work alongside them it will mean that reading from large storage devices because this is a non-volatile memory which basically means that if you unplug your system it's not going to lose the data that is on this uh, device it's not going to just shut down that's all not volatile versus non-volatile means volatile is like ddr3 or gddr5 or hbm um, and obviously there will be differences in terms of performance as well HBM, HBM2, those type of technologies are primarily going to be used for graphics cards or um, APUs whereas this will be used for like storage based devices in a nutshell I'm sure there will be some crossover where you know super high end servers where it needs massive terabytes of data we could see some crossover, but I guess at the moment it's still a little bit of an early days type of situation. But it's really exciting stuff. As I said, if you do want more information, do click on the thing. There is a lot of stuff coming up that we're doing technical analysis for, and basically preparing our anuses for the end of the month. As everyone knows, there's so many different bloody games coming out, so we're just preparing ourselves. There will be some... Um, tech stuff on DirectX 12 benchmarks obviously we all know about that ashes of a singularity so that should be up this weekend as well so do stick around if you want some analysis uh, I don't know once again in case you missed yesterday's video I don't know if I will be including Nvidia stuff at the moment because their drivers or the software I don't know which don't look like they're playing well together so I'll probably do AMD at the first interval and then maybe Nvidia's a couple of days later maybe a week later assuming they fix their drivers it or i suppose technically it could be oxide who are causing the problems or maybe microsoft either way i'll include them when things are you know resolved because at the moment it's just kind of pointless uh i you know it's, it's not fair to give bad impressions of hardware just based on buggy drivers or whatever it's uncool anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now